हेलो हेलो मैम मेरे वॉइस इज वेरी हेलो 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 अमेर वॉइस इज स्टिल ओके हेलो हेलो मोहम्मद नाउ इज इट फाइन यस ओके can you see my screen yes okay so we were studying about returns to a factor yes okay so tell me the name stages of the law of variable proportion uh phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 okay yes but i am asking about the name names uh, yes name is phase 1 page 2 you know no please think more and they were like increasing return now can yes. you think yes please tell me phase 1 is increasing return decreasing return mm -hmm. and last one is negative return negative returns yes okay so tell me explain the relationship between total product and the marginal product uh ma'am uh, the relationship is when in phase 1 uh, in the starting uh, both uh, total product and marginal product uh, are increasing then in uh, phase 2 uh, total product is uh, uh total product uh, is slowly starting to diminish and uh mp is equal uh and then in phase 3 uh, mp is negative and uh, total product is continue to de uh, decrease no it is not like that did you revise the topic which we had discussed in the last class yes ma'am Okay. See, in phase one, what happened when M P increases, T P is also increases at increasing rate. And in phase two, when M P decreases, but remains positive, so T P is also increasing in this.
phase two, but at diminishing rate. Okay. After that, yes. When M P is equal to zero and T P is at its maximum point, then in phase three, M P is negative and T P starts falling. Okay. Yes. Okay. So let's solve this question. We have given fixed factor, which is one. Okay. And variable factor as zero, one, two, three, four, five till six, and we have total product as zero, ten, thirty, forty-five, fifty-two, fifty-two, forty-eight. Please write down this table. Yes, ma'am. Hmm. Yes, Mohammed. Is there any issue? No, I'm all right. Okay. when you are done with the table please let me know Yes, Mohammed. No, I'm not. Okay. Here you have to just copy or note it down. We will solve it together. Okay. Yes. I'm done. Then okay. Okay. So we have given fixed factor, right, and variable factor. So first, we can denote variable factor as 
v dot f okay yes yes ma'am okay so we have given variable factor as 0 till 6 ma'am first you have to write fixed factor no uh, here i am writing down only uh, from variable factor then total product then marginal product here i am not uh, writing okay. fixed factor as they are fixed right it is one yes yeah. Two, three, four, five, and six. Yes, Mohammed, where are you? Okay, now we have given total product, so we will write as TP. Okay? Yes? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so tell me TP, the value of TP, 0, 10, okay. 10, then 30, okay, 30, then, then 45, 45, then, then uh, 52, okay, then again 52, okay, then, and then 48. 48. Okay. Now we have to find marginal product. We can write it as m dot p dot. Okay. Here we have to find phases. After that, we will uh, draw the graph. Yes. Yes. Then we will plot the curve with the help of this table. Okay. Uh, so, MP is here. MP is nil. Yes? yes. Not defined. Okay. And when we have one variable factor, we will get MP as 10. Yeah. Hmm. After that? Uh, for, 20. Uh, 20. Yes. And then it will be 15. Yes. After that? After that, 50, 7, 7, then again 7, then 0, then, oh, 0, sorry, uh, um, then for 52 okay. minus 48 will be 4, minus 4. Okay. Now tell me, what is the first phase from here? till this portion yes yes ma because till now mp is increasing and tp is also increasing after that mp will start falling 10 20 then 15 yes yes okay This is the first phase. So, this is the phase one. And after that, we have phase two till from fifteen to Zero? Yes? Yes, ma'am. Okay. This is our phase one. Phase two. After that, we have? Phase three. Phase three. This is our phase three. Phase three. Okay, so we know that under phase one, we have increasing rate. 
under phase two we have diminishing rate and under phase three we have negative rate yes yes okay now let's plot this curve with the help of this table first we have zero this is our units of variable factors yes yes okay and and this is our tp slash mp so on x axis we have we have units of variable factor yes which is 1 1 2 3 4 5 6 2 3 4 5 So this is our x-axis on which we have units of variable factor. So now let's move on to TP slash MP, which is total product and marginal product. Okay, so we have 10. After that, we have 20. Then 30 after that 40 then 50 till 60 okay Now, let's plot this. First, we will mark the points. So variable factor, we have zero. So we will mention as we can put dot here. Let's take different color. So, this okay this is the zero and then here i am taking first variable factor and total product okay this is our tp 110 after that we have to take 230 30 here after that we have 345 45 is somewhat here. After that, 52 on 4 and 52. It is here. Then 5 and 52 again. Okay. After that, 6. We have 48 here. Yes. Okay, can you see the points? Yes. Okay. So first, what will happen? It will increase till 30. After that, at increasing rate after that it will still increase but at diminishing rate yes can you see yes and it will start falling 
देखिए डिफरेंट कलर and then let's draw mp here we have to take one and 10 same we have after that 20 and we have this after that on 20 we will take it as here Yes. After that, yes. Fifteen. Four is seven. Yes. And seven. Here it will lie, and then zero. It will become zero. After that, it will become negative. So now, what will happen here? It will first MP will first increase, then. Start falling, become zero, then become negative. Can you see here? Yes, ma'am. This is empty. This is empty. So here. Are you able to understand? Yes. So this is our phase one. After that, we have phase two, where MP is zero, and now. This is the point P. This is the point M. And this is the point N. Okay. Yes. Okay. So we have. Are you able to understand this curve? How we have plotted this? Yes. Okay. So as you can see in the graph, first total product increases. Yes, increasing yes. at increasing rate till point P. After that, the point of this is the point of inflection. Do you remember this? This is the point of inflection. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and till that point, that is the second unit of variable factor. MP is increasing. Then, as the total product. Start increasing at diminishing rate. This is our second phase. Now it enters into second phase, TP. Till point M, when yes. TP is maximum, the MP keeps declining. Can you see here? It keeps declining. MP is declining, yes. and reaches zero at point N. This happens at sixth unit of variable factor. Yes. Yes. After this point, the TP starts decreasing, and MP becomes negative. Now MP becomes negative. Yes, is it clear to you? Yes. So this is our phase one. Phase one. This is our phase two. This is our phase three. Okay. Is there any doubt? No, I'm not. Okay. So now here, this is a curve. So here, now let's understand the relationship between average product and the marginal product. Okay. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. 
okay so here we have given fixed factor as 1 and variable factor from 0 to 6 and average product first we have not defined average product after that we have 10 15 15 13 10.40 and 8 and we have given margin product first we have not defined margin product after that we have 10 20 15 7 0 and minus 4 okay yes. yes okay first we have given uh, let's understand the phase first we have given um the phase 1 from here to till 20 yes after that mp will start falling yes this is our phase 1 till 20 after that from 15 we have phase 2 Until zero. Yes. After that, we have phase three, which is minus four. Yes. So let's understand the relationship between average product and marginal product. here we have given zero then one this is a on x axis we have units of variable factor yes okay Three, four, five, and six. This is our unit of variable. factors and on y axis we have average product and margin product 5 yep. 10 15 20 then 25 This is our AP slash MP. Now we have given. Can you see the table? Please write down the table first. Okay, done. Done. Okay. Now here, first we have. Let's plot the table. Uh, let's plot the curve with the help of table. First, focus on average product. Okay. So we have. First we have ten. Okay, we have ten on one variable factor, and then fifteen on second variable factor, and then again fifteen on third variable factor. Variable factor. Yes, and then thirteen. On fourth variable factor, and we have 
टेन पॉइंट फोर जीरो ऑन फाइव देन वी हैव एट ऑन so it will start from here it will increase then it will start falling okay this is our this is ap average product yes okay then we have given now we are going to plot marginal product first we have given on one variable factor 10 okay and after that 20 Add two variable factor, then we have given fifteen. Add third variable factor, and then seven. Here, here seven. Add four variable factor, and then zero. Add five variable factor. and then we have minus 4 here now what will happen here it will start i think you missed uh, three oh okay. no no sorry no okay is it fine yes ma'am it's okay so here it will increase then it will start falling and it will meet with ap then still positive but falling and now zero now it becomes negative here this is our mp marginal product okay and now what happen here first the marginal product and the average product initially increases yes we can see here both are increasing yes mohammed yes this is mp this is ap then decreases due to the operation of law of diminishing marginal return yes yes sir okay as long as mp is higher than ap here we can see that mp is more than ap yes it is higher than here mp mp is higher than ap ap is also increasing as long as mp is higher than ap okay at the highest point of ap that is when ap is at its maximum here can you see yes mp is equal to ap right they are both same yes okay when mp becomes lesser than ap now mp is less than ap can you see here with the orange line yes yes mom yes. okay then ap also starts to fall we can see here it is also falling yes okay when mp becomes okay after that both ap and mp fall yes both are falling we can see here with the orange line and the purple line yes but yes. mp becomes negative 
and AP remains positive. Yes. Okay. Also, MP falls at faster rate as compared to AP. Yes? Yes. Okay. So, is there any doubt? No. So are you clear with the relationship between AP and MP? Yes. yes okay. And so first, what what happens here? AP increases as long as MP is greater than AP here. You can see with the help of this graph. Yes. Till the point at. MP is at maximum. Then AP decreases when MP is less than AP. Now, what happens here? MP becomes zero and then negative, and AP remains positive. Okay, is it clear to you? Is there yes. any doubt? No, no doubt. No. Okay. So now, please tell me. Explain the relationship between marginal product and the average product. Please uh, think for two minutes. Uh -huh. Yes, here you have to. Can you see my slide? Uh, yes, ma'am. Can... Okay. So please answer the question. Think for uh, two minutes. One minute, ma'am. If you want to draw the uh, graph, you can draw it and then you can explain it to me. Okay, ma'am. Uh, now I can say. Okay, please explain it. Uh, ma'am, when the average product is uh, uh it's increasing, mm. uh, the marginal product is above the average product, and then when average product is declining, uh, mm. the marginal product is below the average product, and when the average product is at maximum, mm. uh, the marginal and uh, uh, average product are equal to each other. Hmm. Yes, very good. Yes, ma'am. Okay. this. After that, MP becomes negative and AP. Yes, MP and AP is not. I mean, AP is equal. Okay, but MP becomes negative and AP is falling. Yes? Yes. Yes. Okay. Is there any doubt? No, no doubt. Okay, so now let's understand the relationship between total product, average product, and the marginal product. Okay. 
as you have understood the relationship between total product and marginal product then average product and marginal product now let's understand the relationship between three of them total product average product and marginal product right yeah. so can you see the table here we have fixed factor as land yes which is five yes. acres okay after that we have given variable factor which is labor from 0 to 8 then we have given total product 0 5 12 21 28 34 38 38 32 and we have given average product not defined 5 6 7 7 6.8 6.3 5.44 then marginal product not defined 5 7 9 7 6 4 0 minus 6 so here first let's understand the phases different phases we have three phases first first phase this is from 5 here we have to focus on marginal product from 5 till yes. 9 we have first phase after that we have second phase which is from 7 to 0 after that we have third phase which is minus 6 yes okay so yes. here we have this curve as we have plotted this curve with the help of table okay this is total product on the above part and on below part we have given marginal product and average product yes yes first what will happen here in first stage first yes um, first, it's, first it will start increasing phases. okay and then it will it will become uh, it will become equal and then it will start uh, diminishing okay you are talking about a point MP, ap tp yes okay so under stage one first total product let's understand about total product first increases at increasing rate yes then yes. it will reach to second stage it will increase at diminishing rate and then it will start falling this is our point p we will call it as point of inflection yes and then what will happen to mp here first it will increase yes it will increase marginal product will increase and then reaches at its maximum yes begins to yes. decrease it will start falling and then become equal to zero then become negative and what will happen to average product first it will start increasing yes and then yes ma'am become maximum yes equal to mp after that it will also start falling but it will never become negative yes yes ma'am okay now is it clear to you the relationship between total product marginal product and average product yes ma'am okay so this is our first stage increasing return diminishing return second stage third stage negative return yes ma'am understood okay very good okay so here this is your homework here you have to explain the law of variable proportion with the help of diagram here you have to draw the diagram which we have studied here okay like this three of them total product average product and the margin product and here you have to mention the stage one stage two and stage three also okay on x-axis we will have units of variable factor 
and on y axis we will have total product marginal product and average product okay yes so this is your homework okay so we have completed the production function chapter yes. we have covered these topics can you see as per your cbse syllabus we have covered these topics if yes. anything is left as per your school syllabus you can inform me no ma'am we have we have done it okay okay so let's start the new topic yes okay ma'am yes ma'am if you want uh... yeah yeah okay. we have yes we have time so we will start the topic as you have start, exam too so let's uh, start the topic which is cost so first tell me uh, do you have any idea about cost in cost economic is, subject cost is the price of a good yes very good yes cost is the price of a good yes okay. it is the amount you have to pay in order to buy a good yes okay when i talk about uh, with the perspective of producer then how will you define it yes uh, can you think of it that uh, think of as you are a producer you want to produce a product then how will you define the cost for your company for your manufacturing company i don't know ma'am okay so here we have cost so in order to produce the goods and services a firm needs input yes yes ma'am okay so there are two types of inputs first is factor input as well as non factor input okay so cost refers to the expenditure incurred by a producer what is cost here we have cost refers to expenditure incur by a producer on the factor as well as non factor inputs for a given output given output of a commodity can you see my screen yes, yes. okay okay so here we have given cost which include factor as well as non factor input so first understand what is factor factor inputs so factor input is it can be it can be land labor capital and entrepreneur yes yes ma'am okay and non factor inputs as raw material okay so here for example a producer need to pay labor cost yes <laughs> labor cost it can be wages salary yes. and for land he or she has to pay rent yes 
so what is cost here cost is the expenditure incurred on inputs to produce goods here goods and services here we are fo focusing on goods the commodity okay yes yes it means all the expenses incurred during the process of the conversion from raw material into finished goods here uh, for example let's say we have to um, producer wants to produce with the help of raw material raw material can be sugar yes mohammed where are you milk okay and so on this is for if he or she wants to produce like cake yes yes okay which is a finished goods nice yeah. okay okay so uh, all the expenses like sugar milk flour and so on to convert it into a finished goods yes so pr uh, producer incurred all these expenses during this process from the conversion of raw material into finished goods yes this is our finished yes. goods this is our finished goods okay so he requires some cost he require these inputs so he will incur some cost yes this is the conversion yes so this is called cost of production it means all the expenses such as raw material sugar milk and so on during the process of conversion from raw material into finished goods yes yes ma'am okay so cost is the summation of all the expenditure which is related to the conversion of raw material into finished goods as if producer wants to produce a biscuit or chocolate so he requires some raw material then the raw material will convert it into finished goods but for that he or she has to purchase those raw material so for uh, those raw material it will incur cost expenses yes he has to pay something for that okay okay so this is a cost which is the expenditure incurred by a producer on the factors as well as non factor input for a given output of a commodity yes is there any doubt no ma'am no okay so cost referred to the uh, to the incurred by a producer on factor input as well as non factor input for a given output of a commodity so now let's understand the cost is always measured as opportunity cost do you know what is opportunity cost as you have studied it in your term 1 Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Do you have any idea about what is opportunity cost? Yes, ma'am. Can you recall few no. points? Yes. Ma'am, uh, opportunity cost is. Uh, any example? I think I forgot. Okay, it's okay. Okay. So, what is opportunity cost here? is the total sacrifice made for producing given level of output when i talk about the perspective of producer yes yes okay 
okay so opportunity cost here here the opportunity cost is opportunity cost is the cost of next best alternative for gone yes, yes now can you recall it opportunity cost is the cost of next best alternative for gone okay for example you have three alternative yes first is you have three choices first is first is you can watch tv yes then next yes. is you can go for a walk and the third one is you can study okay so this is your first choice then this is your six you have second option and this is your third option and you will choose as you have chosen study yes you can study yes mohammed you will choose um. study yes yes okay so you have chosen this one so the second one is your opportunity cost okay for which you didn't go this is your you have chosen this one and this is your opportunity cost yes this is your opportunity cost yes ma'am okay so this is opportunity cost which is second option you have sacrificed for studying yes yes so now let's understand with the perspective of a farmer suppose a farmer can produce either 40 quintal of rice if farmer can produce 40 quintal of rice and or he can produce 30 quintal of rice yes it's depend on his choice yes Mohammed. yes okay so on his land with the given resources if he chooses to produce the rice which is of 40 quintal yes 
Yes. Then what will happen to thirty? Thirty will be considered as. It will be considered as opportunity cost. Yes. Which a farmer has sacrificed. Yes. Yes. This is his opportunity cost. Opportunity cost, and he has chosen this one. now are you able to understand the concept of opportunity cost which is a cost of next best alternative for corn yes okay as the farmer has sacrificed for producing the 30 quintal of rice yes ma'am as he has chosen to produce the 40 quintal of rice so the opportunity cost is here for the farmer is 30 quintal of rice. 30 quintal. Yes. So what is opportunity cost? It is the cost of next best alternative for one. Yes, very good. Okay. So cost is always measured as opportunity cost because cost of producing a given amount of output is to be measured in terms of sacrifices made in the producing that output yes yes so here we can consider as cost as equal to opportunity cost okay So, is this clear to you? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, what is cost function here? So, the cost function is <laughs> since the producer who produces output and incurs cost, we can say that cost is a function of output. Yes. It means that cost of production will increase or decrease depends on whether level of output is increasing or decreasing as when producer uh, wants to increase the level of output then the cost of production will also increase yes and vice versa yes okay so here the cost of function is Cost function is the functional. relationship between cost and the output yes what is cost function it is the functional relationship between cost and output it means function on the production of output which involves expenditure yes yes okay so here we have cost function as C is equal to F bracket Q, where C 
T is the cost. Yes. Yes. And Q is the output. And F is the functional relationship. Yes. Is it clear to you the cost function? The cost function yes. is a functional relationship between cost and output. We can denote it as C equal to F bracket Q. Where C is cost of the product, Q is the output, and F is functional relationship. Okay. Yes. Okay. So now cost is equal to explicit cost and the implicit cost. Implicit cost. Okay. So here. We have given cost is equal to explicit cost plus implicit cost. Yes. Yes, Mohammed. Yes, sir. Okay. Do you know what is explicit cost and implicit cost? Yes, do you have any idea about this? I think I forgot. Yes. I forgot. Okay, you forgot. Okay, it's okay. So here, for first, let's understand <laughs> the explicit cost. Okay. So here we have explicit cost. With the name itself, you can understand that which you can express, explain. Yes, you can see as it is the actual money or the expenditure on inputs or payment made to the outsider for hiring their factors. Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay, here as you can see. What is explicit cost? It is the opportunity cost of hiring, purchasing input from market. In short, it is the payment made by a firm to other for hiring, purchasing input from the market. For example, wages paid to, uh, paid to the worker. Yes, payment of electricity bill. It is also done to the outsider. Yes, we are paying money to outsider. <laughs> yes. So what is explicit cost here? It is the actual money expenditure on inputs or payment made to outsider for hiring their factors. It involves actual money payment on buying and hiring input. Yes, for example, for a restaurant, if a, for, uh, if a businessman is hiring a chef for a, his restaurant, yes, he will pay salary to the chef. Yes? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So this is explicit cost for a businessman. He has to pay this is for which he has some actual money expenditure. He can mention that this amount he is paying to the chef as a salary. Yes. Okay. So here. Uh, 
explicit cost can be wages paid to employee yes or for purchasing raw material businessman incurs some cost a firm incurs some cost which is explicit cost yes rent paid for hired land rent paid for hired land yes or insurance pre premium paid to secure the property from fire yes or theft yes so this is explicit cost which is which is an actual uh, money term which we can we can define that yes this is the amount which we are going to pay for hiring something from outsiders yes like as you can see here this is a form this is a form and the firm is paying money rupees two lakhs yes to the outsider outsider can be employees the workers or the insurance company yes yes okay so this is all about explicit cost okay is there any doubt in explicit cost no ma'am no no okay so now let's understand the implicit cost what is implicit cost here it is the opportunity cost of using self own input where a businessman using his or her property yes like land yes. like home any building yes it is yes. the market value of self own inputs in their next best alternative use for example estimated rent of entrepreneurs on building estimated interest on entrepreneurs own capital or salary for services of entrepreneurs and so on so let's understand this concept okay here yes. what is implicit cost implicit cost here is it is the estimated value here we have considered the actual value yes here we have considered the actual value here we know that yes this is the value we have to pay for the salary wages and insurance premium or rent yes yes ma'am for 
implicit cost we can't define the actual amount but yes we can estimate the value here this is the estimated value so it is the estimated value of the inputs supplied by the owner yes assumed estimated value assumed as the cost which is sacrificed by the owner which he can use for the benefit of occurring incurring any money yes getting any money such as a businessman doing work in his home but if he does something for uh, in business or going uh, somewhere he will get the money yes but as he is doing something for his home so he is not getting anything so what is implicit cost it is the estimated value of input supplied by the owner it involve input value of factor owned by the firm yes yes for example the rent of own land he has a land and he is going to produce something but for that land he will not going to pay uh, pay to someone yes or for salary as he is doing something for his own business so he is not can getting any salary for that so he is sacrificing here the salary for the services of entrepreneurs yes yes if he does work somewhere so he will get some salary in return so the cost suffered by the owner yes it can be a rent salary yes the interest on capital he will introduce the capital yes you know what is capital as you have studied in accountancy subject yes okay so if he used this capital money as fixed deposit in a bank yes he will open an account so he will get some interest rate of uh, return yes yes okay so he has sacrificed that money so this is called implicit cost okay so here this is the rent own of own land and it can be a salary for the service of entrepreneur yes yes okay so is there any doubt between implicit cost and explicit cost no no so here you can see that implicit cost is where firm is not paying anything yes as he is or she is the insider he is using his own property own land this is the insider yes so here no money is paid yes yes okay so is there any doubt no i'm not doubt. okay so we will understand the difference between implicit cost and the uh, explicit cost in the next class until now is there any doubt no ma'am no doubt okay so please revise the topic okay Yes. Yes, Mohammed. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you.
थैंक यू मैम बाय बाय